Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It is so nice to see you. If this is your first time meeting with me, my name is John Weatherby and I'm a full-time travel and landscape photographer based in Florida. So I wanna talk with you today about my favorite adjustment in Photoshop and that's curves. Curves is super powerful and super useful for many different cases. So let's jump into Photoshop and I'm gonna show you different ways that I use curves in my editing process. All right, so what exactly is a curves adjustment? So a curves adjustment is one of various adjustments that are available within Photoshop. So you can apply this adjustment as a adjustment layer down here from the icon under the layers panel, or also from the adjustments tab. And if you don't see the adjustments tab visible, then you can go up here to window and just make sure that that's selected. So alternatively, you can also apply a curves adjustment directly to a layer, which I don't suggest because when it's applied as a layer itself, then you can go and make adjustments to this adjustment layer. And you could go back and change those if you'd like in the future. And you could also use the layer mask that's attached to either mask out certain parts, or you could, you know, essentially invert the mask and then paint in the areas that you want to show the adjustment. So versus, let me delete this, versus if you apply this adjustment directly onto the layer from the adjustments tab up here, then you're not going to be able to change this after the fact unless you convert the object to a smart object, which is an option. But I like to just apply them directly as an adjustment layer, and that way you can use the layer mask that's attached as well. So let's talk about curves. So actually, let me take this properties tab out so it's a little bit bigger so you can see better. All right, so curves essentially deals with the different brightness values within the photo. And here you can actually see a histogram where it shows all the different amounts of pixels within every single area of brightness. So to the left, we have the shadows, which is indicated by the dark. And then to the right, we have the highlights, which is indicated by the white. And then in between is basically going to be the midtones. So what I like about curves is we can adjust the brightness of the tones within this tonal range. And we can also affect the colors within the tonal range as well. So for example, if we select red, we can remove red from the shadows or increase it in the shadows, or we can also increase it in the highlights, decrease it in the highlights, or in the midtones, etc. I'll go more into the color aspects in just a minute, but for now I'm going to stick with RGB. So basically we can target specific areas. So if we want to make the shadows darker, for example, we can bring the shadows down in this area. And if we want to make the highlights brighter, we can bring the highlights up in this area as well. And this is kind of like your classic S curve. So you can play around with different S curve settings and strengths if you'd like. And then pro tip, you can even save these curves presets under the little drop down menu here. And you can use them again in the future by going here to your preset menu. So if you are a pro panel user, there is a preset curves adjustment called Lux, which emulates the Lux filter on Instagram. And you can see that it adds a nice little pop of color and contrast. So I'm a big fan of that Lux filter. But going back to the S curve that we just created, because it is on an adjustment layer, we can drop down the opacity if we wanted to. So basically changing the strength. So that's a benefit of using an adjustment layer. We can basically turn the strength down of the adjustment by lowering the opacity of the layer. We can also mask it out of certain areas. So for example, if this curves layer blew out some of the highlights here, we could actually mask it out of the highlights using something like the pro panel with the luminosity masks. We could create a brights mask and basically apply it as an inverted layer mask, and then that would actually mask out the highlights out of this curves adjustment so that they're not blowing the highlights out and it's only showing through the other areas. So that's one of the benefits of using the adjustment as a layer again, along with being able to change the opacity is being able to mask out parts of the adjustment or alternatively just revealing certain parts of the adjustment through a mask. So let's talk about the color aspects. So let me open up this document here. And here we have a shot of Cellulans Fawcett's sunset. And basically we have a really strong red color cast and the shadows. So if I create a curves layer, then we can just go over here to reds. And you can see that we could just pull the reds down in just the shadows if we wanted to. And if you want to bring them back up and the highlights are basically not affect the highlights, you can bring this point back up here to the baseline and that will only affect the shadows essentially. So another way that we could do this, let me undo this, is we could actually just grab this hand tool and select the area that we want to affect with red selected and we can just pull this down and you can see that it's just taking the red out of the shadows and partially again in the highlights so we can fix that by just bringing this back up to the baseline. 
So let's say that we want to also brighten the shadows. Let's go back to RGB. And with the hand tool selected here, we can just click and drag and we can actually brighten the shadows up as well. So just with a couple clicks, we just took the color cast out of the shadows and also brighten the shadows. So let's say we want to take the color cast removal effect out of some of the areas in the clouds so that we keep some of that red color in the clouds. So well, we can just use this layer mask that's automatically attached to an adjustment layer and we can grab our brush. You can hit B on the keyboard or select it from your tools. And with black selected, we can just paint that out of certain areas. So let's actually change the opacity and the flow so it's a subtle effect. And we can start to paint that adjustment layer or this curves layer basically out of some of the areas and we can wind up with some of that red color back in the clouds that we removed. And you can do this, you know, through the waterfall and just avoiding the foreground with the shadows. If you wanted to be more specific, you could grab something like the quick selection tool and you could just make a selection, a rough selection even, just so you don't paint into back into the shadows and you could grab your curves and with the mask selected, you could just grab your brush and just paint just along these edges here. And then this way we're not affecting that redness that was in the sky at all. All right, so you can see the before and after with the coloring here. And I think that looks really good. So let's say alternatively, we wanted to target the highlights in the photo and maybe make them a little bit more yellow. We could grab blue and then we could essentially just take the blue down in the highlights area and what it's going to do is it's going to increase the yellow in the highlights and i don't think that looks really good i just wanted to show you that as an example but basically the way that it works is you would select the color that you want to affect and then whatever you do to the color if you increase it it's going to increase this color and if you decrease it then it's going to basically introduce the opposite of the color into the photo so really quick for reference let me pull up the color balance adjustment and basically here, this is a good visual. You can see that the opposite of blue is yellow, the opposite of green is magenta, and the opposite of red is cyan. So going back to the curves layer here, if I was to grab green, for example, and take the green down, it's gonna essentially introduce magenta into the photo. So we could also, you know, introduce more magenta into the highlights, basically just by bringing the green down in the highlights region. And if that made the shadows have some magenta, we could reduce that by just bringing the shadows back up to baseline here. So you can see the before and after here is a very strong and noticeable effect. And I actually have to admit, I posted this photo online before realizing that this color cast was there and it was very present. So um, yeah, I'm a little embarrassed, but now I actually have a color corrected version of the photo that I can repost. So let me show you a way we can actually do some automatic color correction in a photo. So here I have a shot from Glacier International Park and there is a slight color cast in the photo. I don't know if you can notice it, but there's a quick way that we can actually create an automatic color cast correction with a curves layer. So let me create a curves layer. Um, you can do that from the panel or again from down here in the adjustments. And basically I'm going to go up here to the little drop down and I'm going to go to the auto options and I'm going to select fine, dark and light colors and I'm going to click OK. So that basically is an automatic color correction feature in the pro panel that's under filters and that's auto color here. But basically you can see if I turn that off and on that it just took that yellow color cast out of the photo. So then I can go a step further and with RGB selected, you know, I can add a little bit of a nice S curve and basically darken the shadows a little, maybe brighten the highlights a little and you can see the final result with just a couple adjustments is a nice color corrected and then contrast corrected image. So a few other cool things that we can do with curves. Let me pull a different image up here. Here I have a blue hour shot that I wound up blending with a stacked sky, uh, stacked shots of the Milky Way that I did for noise reduction. And here you can see if we pull up a curves layer, we can quickly do some adjustments to the image and we can add some contrast again, a little S curve action here if we wanted to. But say we only wanted to affect the foreground. So because I have the foreground on a separate layer here with a layer mask only revealing the foreground, I can actually clip this curves adjustment to a single layer, either with this little button right here, or you can hover between the two layers, the adjustment layer and the layer you want to clip to, holding down option or alt, and you'll see this little box pull up and you can just click that and it actually will clip the adjustment to the layer that you attach it to. 
And basically that adjustment will only affect the layer that is clipped to. So now you can see I can add adjustments to this foreground layer here and it's not affecting the sky at all. So that's really helpful if you're trying to do some blends basically and get things to match. So alternatively, if I bring another curves layer underneath that layer, I can you know, make separate adjustments to the sky without affecting the foreground because essentially that curves layer and the sky layer are below my foreground layer here and basically being shown through the layer mask. So I can you know, make adjustments separately to the sky and the foreground using curves and I can even do this with the color as well. So like let's say that we want to make the sky a little bit more um, purplish. We could go up here to the red and we can introduce some red into the highlights. It's going to make that sky a little more purple tone for example. Let's say we want to do something similar with the foreground. We can grab our curves layer here and let's just take some of the blue out. So let's go to the blues and this time we can use our hand tool and just select an area that we think is super blue. And we could basically just bring down the blues here in the midtones kind of shadow area. And you can see that just took out some of the blue from our foreground. So again, if you think that the strength is too strong, you can turn down the adjustment layer opacity and that just reduces the strength of that effect. So something else that's pretty cool, let me create a new curves layer. You can change the blend mode of a curves layer and actually get an effect and use that for dodging and burning. Or you can just do that manually by darkening you know, the shadows or the highlights and then doing some dodging and burning. But something cool is you can actually change the blend mode of a curves layer without doing anything else and it will create this effect. So let's say we change this to soft light. Just creating a curves layer and changing the blend mode to soft light just created this very strong uh, darkening effect. So if we turn this down maybe to something more subtle like 25% and then we invert this so let's just hit command I or that's control I on a PC. If we grab our brush and we paint with white you can hit X on the keyboard or just toggle right here. If we paint white onto this layer mask we're going to paint the effect in right. So if we just paint white in to some of these areas here we can essentially paint that darkening effect we created from the curves layer into specific areas and we can dodge and burn essentially. So you would want to take a lot more time when you're doing dodging and burning but I'm just showing you guys really quickly the possibility of this. And if I turn that off and on you can see we just darken certain areas by painting the curves layer in. So we could create another curves layer and then change this to screen, for example, and then drop the opacity way down to something like that, and then just invert it. So you can invert that also from the pro panel by clicking invert. And we could just hit B on the keyboard, select our layer mask, and paint that effect back in just into the highlights if we wanted to, and we could do some, you know, dodging basically on the highlights. So this can be really helpful, especially if you use it in combination with a luminosity panel like the Pro panel. For example, we could just create a curves layer and darken the shadows and then create basically a shadows mask and apply that. And then now you can see that that darkening effect is only applied to the shadows. And if you think it's affecting too much of the rest of the image, you can always refine this mask as well with the Pro panel. Um, by basically you know hitting refine and then the way the layer masks work is black conceals and white reveals so basically the areas that are white are going to be revealed to the layer mask in this case our darkening effect would be revealed through the layer mask in the white areas so if I click OK now and then hide this you can see that that darkening effect is only applied to the shadows so we can quickly just do some burning in the shadows and then effectively we could do the same thing with the highlights so let's create another curves layer and let's just brighten up the highlights. If I turn that off really quickly and then just create a highlights mask. And then apply that layer mask here. You can see that that brightening effect is only going to be applied to the highlights now. So the cool thing about layer masks is you can always just grab a brush and then just paint out 
the adjustment in certain areas. So for example, I just brightened the highlights up and the highlights were too bright in this little area here in the core. So I can just paint that out. So basically you can see that we just wound up with a more color correct blend as well as adding some contrast and some dodging and burning as well with curves pretty easily. All right, so hopefully you guys found this video helpful and you find curves as useful and powerful as I do. If you have any questions at all, you can leave them in the comments below the video and I'll get back to you. And again, check out the discounts on my courses and the pro panel if you're interested in leveling up your photography and your editing skills. Thanks again, guys, and happy holidays.